What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Jamans Nicholas, big dogs gotta eat. BDGE fantasy football had to get a rapid reaction video out to y'all. Of course, the breaking news: Josh Gordon traded to the New England Patriots. It's funny because I know a lot of you guys are like, "How the fuck you get this video up already?" Well, here's what happened. Uh, I, you know, I heard that the deal was almost done probably like three or four hours ago. So I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna start writing this blog post because I know the Patriots are gonna get it done. That's just a team. That's what they do as a team. When they want something, they get it done. So I knew he was going to the Patriots. So I just started writing up what the impact would be, so I can get you out of rap reaction, get the first, first of. Uh, a little bit of analysis that you're going to find around the web. I know you're going to see a lot of noise throughout the next couple of days, but I want to give you my my thoughts, what I've seen on the Twitter world, what I've seen on blogs and whatnot. Um, and I'm just going to lay it all out there for you. I have a lot of my notes up here. So this is the Josh Gordon reaction video to the New England Patriots. This is the first you're hearing of it. One, thumbs up that video, baby. Obviously, I'm gonna be the first one to get this out on YouTube. That actually is quality content, I promise you. Um, I will be scouring the web to make sure I bring you all of the correct news on Josh Gordon, and this is what we have so far. Josh Gordon has been traded to the New England Patriots in exchange for a fifth round pick. The Patriots will also get a seventh round pick in return if Josh Gordon is not active for 10 games. So, what does this mean for fantasy football? What does this mean for Gordon's outlook, what does it mean for the rest of the Patriots weapons outlook when it comes to fantasy football? This is a tweet I ran across from Pat Thorman over at Pro Football Focus at PFF. It was actually kind of hilarious, um, even though I don't think it was meant to be funny. He said, Josh Gordon played one game against the Patriots. He turned eight targets into seven catches, 151 yards, and a touchdown five years ago. He was unstoppable. Belichick remembers. I thought it was funny because Belichick probably does remember that five years ago and would have probably loved to grab Josh Gordon at any point within the last five years. And now came the opportunity. I'm sure he called up Robert Kraft and was like, get that motherfucker on my team ASAP. And they got it done. So let's talk about Josh Gordon. Since 2013, he's played in 11 of a possible 65 games. Um, and now he seemed fully back and uh, getting acclimated to Cleveland. And it looked like there was going to be a good thing going on there for him. Wrong. Trump meme wrong button. There are uh, a couple of issues. You know, I, I like to kind of break these down and give you every angle and every situation that I could possibly see and let you guys make the decisions on what you think is real, what you think is noise and whatnot. So I wanted to uh, kind of raise the red flags that I see from Gordon's perspective. And I'm trying not to get unreasonably high expectations for Gordon in terms of um, fantasy football, right? Because that's what this is about. So for one, he missed almost all of training camp the entire summer for one reason or another, personal reasons whatever, he missed basically the entire summer with the Browns. He returned and immediately tweaked his hamstring um, right away. And then he ended up coming back, getting healthy, and played on 78% of the Browns' snaps in week one. He did catch a 17-yard touchdown pass, which is a really, 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 really nice uh, catch by Gordon. And I was like, yeah, he's back. He just didn't get targeted. It's a weird game for Cleveland either way, the way they were passing the ball. So that's not on Gordon, I don't think. Um, but later that week, and this was the big you know news that came out two days ago, he apparently retweaked uh, his hamstring. And that was kind of the cause for the, or at least what they expected to be the cut of Josh Gordon before he got traded. So apparently he was doing like a promotional shoot in which he was like sprinting or something. And that's when he tweaked the hamstring. So it wasn't at practice, it wasn't in the game. Um, so we don't really know how healthy he is. Now I saw reports on Twitter that apparently, which is kind of hilarious in my opinion, he is apparently healthy enough to play this Sunday at Detroit. Um, so that's kind of ridiculous considering, you know, we thought that the hamstring tweak was the reason that maybe he was cut or, you know, what, one thing or another. And, uh, apparently he'll be ready. I don't know if that's the case, right? It is a little bit concerning that this is already the second time that he's tweaked his hamstring. And like I've said many times, you know, the hamstring is a tricky muscle or a tricky, um, part of the body to let heal and make sure that you have enough time to heal it because it bodes for very high re-injury risk if you get back on it too quickly and if you do too much work with it and put too much on the plate of the hamstring. Very high re-injury risk and that's, you know, that's it's concerning considering this is the second time he's tweaked the hamstring already since he's been back. But again, if he is healthy and they say he's good to go, then maybe he is and that's out the window, that concern. We'll have to follow up on reports as they come out. The other issue I see is the Pat's playbook, right? This is not an easy one to learn. This ain't Madden. You don't just get to get inserted into the depth chart and all of a sudden you know all the plays and everything and chemistry and timing and everything is perfect with Tom Brady. So it's going to take some time for one, I think, for him to get healthy and get acclimated to the team. Of course, once he's healthy, um, they can run him out there. You know, if he is healthy and ready for this week, I expect him to get a handful of snaps. You know, they could always be like, Josh, get out there for 10, 15 snaps and run a nine route, run a fly, run a whatever route, right? They could just tell him what to run. He could do that. But 
that uh, prevents him from staying on the field at all times. And they're going to have to take him off the field because when they're running these plays or calling these plays, he's not going to know what they are at the time. So that, those are my concerns with, with Gordon. It's one, it's the hamstring. We don't know how healthy that is. Two, it might just take time for him to get acclimated, right? You're not immediately going to sh- uh, shove him into your fantasy lineup. He might only see 20% of the snaps this first week he's in, maybe 35 the next week, 50 the next week, and then 60, 80. You know, it might take some time to work up to that. And you don't want a guy who's playing half of the snaps for a team in, in your lineup unless you're desperate for like a flex play. Now, where I see Gordon being a massive help to this team is on the long ball, of course. Now, Gordon's a ridiculous athlete, big, strong, really fast, can blow by defenders, right? He's a career 17 and a half yards per reception guy. And we know Tom Brady is going to love using flash down the field. Um, it was the reason I was so high on Hogan this year, coming into this year, when we figured out that they were not adding any anyone else at the wide receiver position. Hogan is the only receiver on the pat so far with an average depth of target above 9.1. Those are like slot receiver numbers. He's at 12.6. For, he's at 12.6 per pro football focus, but another fantasy insiders or airyards.com had him at like 16 point something. So I'm not sure which is, which is right, but I know for a fact that he's the only one of Patriots wide receivers above a 9.1 average depth of throw, which tells you he's the main deep ball threat on this team. Gordon definitely can be uh, the Brandon Cooks replacement once he's up to speed and once he's acclimated to the team. Last year, Tom Brady, I just tweeted this out a few minutes ago, Tom Brady attempted the third most deep balls in the NFL, 86 of them, with the highest, fourth highest completion percentage on all of those throws, 43% of them. Through two weeks so far, there are 11 quarterbacks who have attempted as many or more deep balls than Tom Brady so far. So week two is obviously a tough matchup at Jacksonville, um, and their game plan wasn't to try and you know, beat up on these cornerbacks and take a lot of shots deep, of course. Um, but I expect Brady to eventually rise above the crop, those numbers to go up and hit him to attempt more deep balls. And I think that's going to be a big thing when Josh Gordon gets to uh, gets in the lineup and gets acclimated here, right? So last year, Brandon Cooks, speaking on Gordon taking the Brandon Cooks role, Brandon Cooks had the fourth most air yards in the entire NFL and a whopping 33% of his 100. He, so he had 109 targets last year. 33% of them were deep ball targets. Um, And the more I read into this, the more it makes sense that they're going to be utilizing Gordon like they did Cooks last year as a crazy deep threat that, as you can see, saw 110 targets, which is going to be super valuable in this offense. Now, um, I I see a lot of like people are very quick to throw Josh Gordon into the Randy Moss conversation and how they got Randy Moss and just made him like a superstar, of course. But I think that's a little crazy, first of all, because they have more time to get acclimated and Josh Gordon's coming into the fire. He's also like one slip up away from, you know, possibly being suspended for a year. And there's a lot of red flags in that sense, right? Um, but if there's anyone that can get them, get them into shape, it's going to be the Patriots. I think I'm sure they did their due diligence. I don't think they'd go off and, and trade away their picks um, for someone that they saw as a huge risk, right? So the fact that they did go in on him and, uh, and, and, and trade for him and give up an asset for him tells you that you know they're comfortable bringing him onto the team, especially with what he can offer if things break right. Um, but what I'll say is Gordon will obviously have a monster ceiling in this offense. This is the first time he's playing with like a really good, competent quarterback, Tom Brady, of course. So um, I just want people to temper expectations, at least for like the first month of the season for Josh Gordon. Like when would you be comfortable throwing into your lineup? When I see that he's running in the offense on 60 to 80% of the snaps and maybe after his first big target game. I would rather be one week late on Josh Gordon's, you know, first real game than a week early and have him in my lineup when he's running 30% or 40% of the team's offensive snaps. So I'll wait for him to get like somewhere from like six to eight targets in a game. And that will tell me, yes, he's good to go for fantasy lineups. So what does this do for everyone else? Tom Brady has been my quarterback two, or might have even been my quarterback one earlier this year. But either way, he's still a top two quarterback for me rest of season. And this obviously raises his ceiling. So only, it only helps him. Um, the biggest impact will undoubtedly be on Chris Hogan and Philip Dorsett. So we look at Chris Hogan, right? After a shitty week one, Hogan bounced back on Sunday at Jacksonville, surprisingly. Um, he caught three of five targets, 42 yards. Most importantly, he scored two touchdowns. Now, up to this point, Hol- Hogan holds the highest air yard market share on the team for the Patriots. He is accounting for 26% of the Patriots team's air yards. Um, so again, I relate to you, he is their primary downfield option. Now, as long as Gordon is in the lineup, however, and playing a majority of the snaps, Hogan will no longer be the primary downfield read for Tom Brady, and that's where it hurts his value. Um, Edelman will also be back in Week 5, of course, so it puts another question mark into the mix. But this by no means tells you that you should be dropping Chris Hogan. It does not mean that you know he's going to be useless and he's not going to be you know used a lot in this offense because he's still very much 
will be on the field and see plenty of snaps. Last year, he ran 45% of his routes from the slot, and he's been around that same mark this year already. Um, Edelman and Hogan will continually move around the offense. I'm sure they're, they'll actually get Gordon pretty acclimated. Once he actually knows the offense a little bit, they'll be able to move him around. That's the other thing. If Gordon doesn't know the offense that well, they can't ask him to play a lot of different positions, and that's usually what we see players um, excel doing, right? Moving around in the NFL nowadays is always way more valuable because you're running routes against different cornerbacks and you're not always matched up against the wide receiver one. So um, that's another concern for Gordon is the fact that they're not going to be able to move him around too much other than, you know, playing outside and asking him to run specific routes. So Hogan kind of moves down to like a mid-tier probably wide receiver three that will definitely still have his big games and definitely is still a touchdown threat on a week-to-week basis. But he no longer has that like low end wide receiver one ceiling that he had while he was basically the only deep threat and the big touchdown threat on the Pats. Um, however, what I would say is now that Josh Gordon will be the primary outside guy, Chris Hogan, you know, I don't think he was ever meant to handle cornerback ones, right? I don't think he was ever meant to be able to beat the top cornerbacks on the opposing team. And this will help him, especially with Edelman back, Josh Gordon back. Chris Hogan will get a lot easier coverage in these types of games. So he definitely will have his games where he still breaks out. Um, one thing I would say, and this is a pretty interesting tactic I was just thinking about. If you want to send a really, really, really low ball offer for Chris Hogan, because obviously Chris Hogan owners are going to be like, fuck, Josh Gordon's here. Chris Hogan's value is shot. However, um, Edelman is still suspended for the next two games, right? There's two more games before Edelman gets back. And Gordon, I still believe that he won't really be a factor in these games. You won't be comfortable starting him for another three, three-ish weeks. Um, so that gives you a timetable with Chris Hogan when the Patriots, uh, the Patriots, the, pa- the Patriots play at Detroit, home against Miami, home against Indianapolis, home against Kansas City. Those are four defenses to exploit through the passing game. Brady's probably going to go nuts over the next four weeks, and I expect Hogan to benefit from that while Edelman is still out, while Gordon is still getting up to speed. This is a ridiculously good passing slate for that. So I'm not spent saying like spend a lot on Hogan right now just for those four games, but there probably will be some of you guys who are in leagues where the, the Hogan owner is probably freaking out and they're looking to get rid of him for like something really, really, really cheap. And I think that's probably a good um, a good buy for, for someone who needs a wide receiver, right? If you can give up like a low-end um, RB3 or something like that, then I would definitely look to make that move. Um, what else? What else? So this definitely isn't good for Philip Dorsett. It'll be interesting to see, you know, how much time he gets, how much play time he gets while Gordon gets acclimated and with Edelman back and everything. So that kind of uh, doesn't knock Dorsett completely off the table for me, but it becomes a lot less interesting, of course. And Gronk's going to continue to Gronk. I don't think that really affects it. I don't really think it affects the running backs at all. Um, in this in this situation, I think Edelman returning affects guys like Burkhead more than um, anything Josh Gordon would do. So Edelman, um, as a fantasy player, I think it lowers his ceiling a bit, but they'll be running very different routes. I don't think they get any of the same targets anyway, so I'm not too concerned about it. I was never very high on Edelman to begin with, so he'll still be in the wide receiver, wide receiver three-ish realm for me, in my opinion. So at the end of the day, um, one, if you're a Patriots fan, you're looking for a Josh Gordon jersey on the Patriots, yo, make sure you're following my man at the Jersey Jungle on Instagram. He's hooking up with uh, authentic NFL jerseys, actually any sports, and NBA, MLB, NFL for the cheap, like 40 bucks. I can vouch for that. I got a couple of jerseys in the closet. Um, so look him up on Instagram. He doesn't have a website or anything. You just got to DM him at the Jersey Jungle, um, and I'll hook you up. I know a lot of my uh, subscribers and followers have already bought stuff from him, and I haven't heard one complaint yet. So I promise I'm not just selling you bullshit there. If you want a Gordon jersey, he's the guy to go to. I expect he'll have a very high demand there. Um, so basically when it comes down to it, my feelings on Gordon are that his ceiling, of course, is ridiculously high with Tom Brady here. However, I think you need to temper expectations in the beginning, probably the first month of him being there. When would I be comfortable putting him into the lineup after I see, um, a good target number for Gordon, this offense. So that's kind of going to wrap it up. And I just wanted to get something out to you guys quick so you can kind of get on it in case there are trades being thrown around or in case he's on your waiver wire. If he's on the waiver wire, I would definitely be spending somewhere um, between like 30% and 40 to 50% of your budget. I don't know why he would be dropped in any of your leagues, but if he was, that's what I'd be looking to do. That's all I got for Josh Gordon. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you do that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. We will be doing fantasy videos like this three, four times a week. And uh, hopefully we can uh, help y'all bring the chip back to, back to your HQ. Get that ring. Get that ring, baby. Get you one. Get you one of these. All right, I'm out of here. Peace.